for discussion. Just going to be highlight the things uh, students tend to fail during this paper. So, MCID as usual. So let's go straight to the point. Question one. Which of the following is not applicable to viruses? When you say that it is not applicable to viruses, it means that viruses cannot do that. They cause diseases. This is correct. They have ability to reproduce on the nope. Then they're saying that the simplest known as uh, organisms. Remember, viruses are not classified as organisms. So no, cannot, they cannot. Uh, they cannot respire. They cannot respire. Can they respire? No. They cannot respire. Meaning that, okay, this is correct. The simplest known organisms. Uh, remember, they are not classified as organisms. However, because of the living and the non living properties, so they tend not to be. Sometimes you can say that, yes, they are organisms. Sometimes you can say that. They're just crystals. Yes. So basically, they are simplest known. Yes, we can say yes. Uh, so therefore, this is correct to the virus. It is correct to the virus. It is correct to the virus. They have ability to reproduce on their own. No. This is the most wrong answer because the question is in the negative. So B becomes the correct answer. So here I give you two marks. They're saying that uh, the type of immune system, type of immunity babies uh, acquire during breastfeeding. When you talk about during breastfeeding, it means that that immunity was not obtained. It was just passed through uh, from the mother to the baby, but without an infection, meaning that it is basically passive immunity. So the answer becomes, B. A new plant that grows from a piece of stem is an example of you grow a plant, a plant, a new plant that grows from a piece of stem is an example. Just grow from the piece of stem. Uh, no, sexual, no. Uh, uh, unisexual. Eh? What's this? No. There are, some of these words are just to confuse you, to see that uh, you don't just give the answer. You don't just go straight to the answer. Just is to confuse you. The answer is asexual. To max. Which uh, of the organism, uh, which one of the following graphs uh, correctly represents the relationship between temperature and the rate of photosynthesis. Remember, the graph for temperature is always like that. At this point, there is degeneration, and this point, there is the, uh, inactivity. Yeah, the, 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 the enzymes are inactive, and at this point, there is optimum. So, no, no, no. So the answer becomes C. This is the optimum temperature. This is the denaturation, and this is the, uh, the enzymes are still inactive. So the answer becomes C. We give you two marks there. Then, uh, which one of the following is a disadvantage? They're saying disadvantage uh, of blind spot. Uh, when you say a blind get, it means that one side is closed. So they're saying that different organ, uh, regions of the gut are adapted for different uh, functions, you know, mixing of undigested. Since they're saying they're talking about the disadvantage, yes, there is mixing. Ingestion and ingestion takes place spontaneously. No. So basically, two is the most correct answer. 
So the answer becomes D. So two marks there. 1.6, the capsid of the virus. Yeah, when we are giving a prediction, it was a very good prediction. And those people who use the distinction material book, I think you have the distinction based on what we try to predict and what came out from the paper. So they're saying that capsid of the virus is um, protective protein. Yes. Method of, no. Nucleic, no. Nuclease ends, no. So the most correct answer is A. So I give two marks there. Which atmospheric gas would increase if all green plants in the world were destroyed? Which atmospheric gas will increase? Ne? Automatically, uh, don't forget that during the process of photosynthesis, you have that reaction. You have that reaction, uh, that reaction whereby carbon dioxide is used. But now, if the green plants are absent in the world, it means that carbon dioxide levels are going to increase. Hence, C becomes the most correct answer. Then we go to 1.8. The cartoon below illustrates a possible human impact on our environment. Okay. Here you see that there is a light here. There is a plant here. Automatically, the light is striking the plant. I think this is the process of photosynthesis. So, and the product of photosynthesis is the oxygen. Let's go to the question. You know the following uh, basic requirement for human survival produced by the innovative design. Obviously, uh, if you're looking for production, oxygen is produced. Remember, we humans, we use this oxygen. Hence, B becomes the most correct answer. So here we are saying that the blood system in uh, which blood flows from, it flows from where to where. It flows from the uh, blood vessels, sorry. Uh, just a moment. Okay, I was saying that uh, the blood system in which blood flows from blood vessels, from the blood vessels into space. So how do you call that? From the blood vessels, it means that uh, it, it comes from the blood vessels and then it bathes the cells. Yes. So because it is in the tube and then it goes to the cells, just like that, it is open. Therefore, it becomes open blood system or open saturatory system. Um, the next question saying that the split of water using radiant during light. I was emphasizing this when I was teaching. This is called photolysis. Why do we call it photolysis? It's because photolysis means photo light. Lysis means splitting. Yes. So it means that the breakdown of The breakdown of this water molecule is called, uh, in science, is called photolysis. The next question is saying that the indicator used to test for presence of carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is tested using what you call uh, lime water. 
lime water must turn milky if carbon dioxide is present. You can add the word clear, clear lime water, but lime water is the compound or chemical which is used to test for uh, presence of carbon dioxide. Then the type of alimentary canal which stretches from mouth to the, uh, the anus. Sometimes we call it a trough gut. Uh, sometimes we can call it the gastro intestinal tract. So you can call it a trough gut, or we can call it a gastro, gastro means stomach, intestinal, intest, intestinal, in te, no, in test, in, no, tract. So tract means a tube, ne? yeah, it's like a duct. Ah. They're saying that the blood vessels which transport, which transports absorb nutrients from the small intestine to the river. Yes, which transports, yes, we, we call it portal vein. But because we're talking about the liver, so it's gonna become the hepatic, hepatic portal vein. Yes, so it's called hepatic portal vein. Then when we go to the next question, uh, is Please take note of this. You must follow the instruction the way it is saying. They are saying that characteristics of codex, organisms which have the backbone, internal skeleton, endoskeleton, and closed blood system. Correct. Both. You must have written both A and B, not both. They are saying that. Um, not well-defined nucleus present. When you say that not well, not well, meaning that you don't have a true nucleus. U means true, true nucleus. Pro means before, meaning that has no true nucleus. No true nucleus, meaning that the nucleus is not membrane, membrane bounded. So when you say uh, not defined, it means that they are talking about B. So the answer becomes B only. Thalus. Thalus, uh, these are plants which have leaf-like structure, like stru stem-like structure. So, and uh, when you are if actually, I remember now when you're talking about the prediction weeks before we talked about that we like to ask you about the thalas and when you, even when i was teaching you yes i showed you in a distinction material so thalas is b is a only which means there is we have a prothalas but now they are talking about the thalas so the answer becomes a only the body's response to the presence of uh let's go to the next diagram the next question study the diagram below and answer the question that follows i don't know what to say when i see such question i used to tell you when i'm teaching and the, the, during the prediction that this is called the medicine of teachers they can't
stay without it. Check the distinction material book, you'll see what I said there. Anyway, let's just focus on what is being brought. Name the division of the division, name the division to which this plant belongs. This is a bryophyte. Eh? It's a bry. It's a bryophyte. They're saying that provide A, B, C, and F. They're saying A, A, this A. Don't forget that this A is the one which produces spores. So these spores are kept in the capsule. Yeah, capsule. Yes, it's like a, that medicine you take. It is in the capsule, but inside there are some small, uh, round structures or things. So we call it. We call it what? Spores there. So in this case, the the outer part is called the capsule. So this is a capsule, but inside you find out that it has small, 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 small spores. Yes. So B. B, B is called a setter. Go to the distinction material, you'll see. Grade 11. Uh -huh. C, C, this C, because this is connected to the setter, then this is supposed to be a foot. And then F, when you talk about F, these are not roots. No. We call them rhizo. Rhizoids. Why? They are root-like. We don't have stems here. We don't have leaves here. We just have root-like, stem-like, leaf-like structures. That's why this structure is called what? Is called a thallus. Yes. Then I saying state one function of the part labeled A. So when you go back to label A, you find out that they're talking about capsule. And we say that capsules, inside what happens, you have spores. So it means that is responsible for production of spores. And then F, F is the rhizoid, this one. They're used for embedment or anchorage, to anchor. When you say anchorage, it means that you are, you are attachment, you are bringing about attachment. It doesn't only stop there, it's also responsible for absorption. Absorption of water. Yes. Identify the generation X, which generation don't forget that if you go back to our distinction material, you'll find out that we say that uh, this is called the sporophyte fight. And then this is called the gameto, gametophyte. Yes. And don't forget that we say that in braphyte, Gametophyte is the dominant generation over the sporophyte. But the rest of other plants is the sporophyte, which is the dominant generation. And I said, take note of that. Which one of the, which generation XY, okay? XY, so we have identified the generation XY is dominant in this plant. XY, X, XY. So we say that X, X is, is the uh, X, 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 based on this, let me check. X is the sporophyte. So we say that gametophyte is the dominant generation. So meaning that it is Y. So the answer becomes Y here. It's the dominant generation. Give two reasons why this plant is poorly developed to the terrestrial environment. First of all, it requires water for production to take place. Yeah. 
water must be present for production to take place. Number two, it does not have a vascular bundle. Vascular, yes, bundle. Sometimes you call it tissue, vascular tissue. We're talking about xylem and phloem. You understand? Yeah, they don't have the xylem and phloem. <clears throat> then, <clears throat> when we come to these flowers, they're saying that flower A, flower B, flower A, flower B. If you look at these two flowers, they have special characteristics. Check this anthers. They are below the stigma. This can't be win. Never. Why? Because this one is, I didn't check this one. The anthers are above the stigma. And the anthers, check, hmm? they're above the stigma. Why? It protrudes out. It means that when the wind comes, it can shake this and then the pollen can go to the stigma and then fertilization can take place. It means that this must be for wind. Wind. Well, this one must be for insect. Yes. Anyway, let's see. Provide label A. What is this? It's a, a, a style. A is a style. B. Okay, it's a petal, but they're not asking for B. Then they're saying that A, E, with E. E is a stigma of another flower. Ne? Yes, this is also a stigma. And then they're saying that G. G is the anther. Ne? G is the what? It's the anther. Yes. So if you have the anther and the filament, you form what you call the androsia, or what you call the stamen. While if you have this stigma style and ovary, you form what you call the pistil. So B, G is the anther. Then when we go to the next, yeah, when you go to the next question, um, which flower A or B is pollinated by wind? Oh, let me go to this question. Which letter uh, of the structure where seeds are formed? Where do we find seeds here? It's found the seeds in, 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 in ovaries. So the answer must be C. Produce pollen grains from G. So the answer must be G. And then protect the entire flower. Yeah. The, if this bracket was mentioned, no. This one. Yes. So uh, brackets and uh, sepals are used for that purposes, for trying to protect the what? The flower. Yes. <clears throat> which part, which flower A or B is pollinated by wind? We have seen it, that it can't be this, it's supposed to be, be this. Why? Because the anthers are above the stigma. Give two visible reasons for your answer. First of all, the anthers are above the stigma. Number two, the anthers are produced in large amounts. This one, they are large, you see, compared to this, you see. They are large. Because here the insect is easier to move from here to there. But here they're supposed to be a lot so that if something is lost this side, there are some which will go that side. Yes. Stigma is basically feathery so that it can trap those what? Those uh, pollen grains. So it means that you could write this section 
out of 50 within 20 minutes. Yes, within 20 minutes, and you're able to get. Yeah, but as a scientist, you are supposed to write it for 50 minutes. Let's go to the next question, and then we see. Hey, they are saying that I don't usually like to read the extracts. You must read. Yeah. Which type of why am I? Because of the time. Yeah. Pause the video and read the extract. Then after that, we continue. Which type of microorganism cause Ebola? Ebola is being caused by a virus. Yeah, I think they mentioned it here. Ebola virus. They're saying that how do humans contract Ebola? They contract Ebola through basically fluids of the body. Of the what? Of the body. Fluids of the body. Like if someone blood uh, saliva basically it's supposed to be contact the contact disease complete the table below by filling in the missing information only write A and B in your book booklet so how are you going to find the answer here yes and number of infected people survivors death so now, basically, if you have this subtracted from this, you'll be able to remain with this. So to get this, it means that you're going to have this plus this. So when you add this and this, you must get that answer. So you can add it. You'll be able to get the answer. What about this? How do I get this? If I make this X or B, whatever, it means that this plus this is equal to this, but I don't know this. Therefore, this minus this. So I'm going to say 1553 five, minus 926. Answer I get, it must be for the for B here. <coughs> Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Calculate the total percentage of people. We don't know that. Can Ebola, uh -uh. calculate the total percentage of people in the three countries that have died due to Ebola. Huh? They have died due to Ebola. So here you have to be with the total first so that you are able to calculate the percentage of these people. First of all, you have to add all this. For example, you have to add using a calculator. You must get a correct answer. Four, six, six, five, plus one, five, five, three, plus the answer you got here because you are supposed to add these two. So the answer you get here, yes, for example, that X, then you also have to add this. Ne? The answer you get here, for example, is Y. So the percentage is gonna be Y, the people who died, divided by X, divided by the total number of people who infected times 100. So the answer you get is the percentage. So the answer you must get must be 48.57. The answer after calculating, you must get that answer. This is a general question, ne? whereby whether you read or not, still you can get the answer. Then here they're asking for, hmm, Explain how Ebola, can Ebola be treated with antibiotics? No, because this is viral, virus disease. It cannot be treated. Antibiotics are for bacteria. Yeah, give a reason for your answer. I've said it already. Ebola is caused by a virus, yet antibiotics are for bacteria. Explain how Ebola vaccine will be able to prevent the person from getting the disease. Uh, basically, if we look at it in the scientific point of view, the vaccine cannot prevent the person from getting the disease. 
but the vaccine will work out so that the person is not taken to have this disease or does this disease doesn't severely affect the person, but doesn't prevent the person from getting the disease. For example, if you take a, a, a vaccine for, for flu or vaccine for COVID-19, it's not that you won't get the disease, but when the disease comes, you will be able to resist the disease. So explain how Ebola vaccine will be able to make the person resistant from the Ebola what? Disease. That's you are supposed to be replaced like that. Anyway, let's follow the question. But that's the idea which was supposed to be. So the answer here is expected to be, when you bring in this, it will stimulate So the, the, what is going to do is to what is going to do is to and then then is gonna fight that virus. How is it going to fight that virus? It's gonna uh anti the enemy doesn't know anything. So the ambush is gonna kill the enemy very much. That's an ambush when the, that virus comes in. But when you take a, va a vaccine, it's like the virus has not seen you that is coming. So the body is prepared. By the time when the virus comes, the body is prepared. That's why I'm saying that the vaccine does not, it does not stop the virus from entering, no. Virus from entering, no. But it makes the body to be prepared for that incoming virus so that you the situation doesn't become severe to you. Draw a bar graph to indicate the number of people who killed, uh, number of people killed by Ebola virus in these three countries. So since it is a simple graph, the number of people who were killed they are looking for the number of people who are killed, meaning that we are looking for the death. Yes. So it means that you just have to draw a bar graph, as I told you in the prediction. So basically here, you just have to draw a bar graph. You must have a uniform put the figure here, countries, and then you put figure here. What is it? The death. Number of people or people who died. Yes, no units there. And also the title here. This bus must be the same size in terms of the width. The space here must be the same. The spaces must be the same. Yeah, basically that's it. And you get all the six marks. So when they bring such questions, it's just three marks. How do you call this diagram? Those people who watched my predictions, two weeks back, you know what I'm saying. You know how the prediction went. Someone was very happy that, oh my God, whatever I predicted came. Yeah, when I checked the paper after I saw the paper, when they're done writing, I saw that 90% of what I predicted came. Yeah, because there are some things we love when you're setting, and you cannot just take the eye out. Hence, the 90% was possible. Anyway, provide the diagram with a suitable caption. How do you, how, how do you uh, provide a diagram with a suitable caption? How, 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 how is this? What is this? Yes, how do you call this diagram? 
So basically, this is a, a phylogenetic tree showing the different groups or the, the, the development eh, of these plants. Yeah, these terrestrial plants. Identify the groups. Yes. Identify the plant group B and C. B and C. How do you call that? B and C. B and C. So B is, remember, bryophyte, bryophyte, teridophyte, or terophyte. Uh, Gimonosperm, then angiosperm. Yes. So they are looking for B and C. So it is teridophyte or terophyte. And then teridophyte or terophyte. And then gimnosperm. Then they are saying that in which era did the angiosperm first appear? Where is the angiosperm here? Mesozoic era. They are saying that which of the group uh -uh, identify evolutionary it's not x and y yeah so we have seen it which era identify evolutionary x and y okay this is what happened here remember that you start with the with the plants which require a lot of water then after that, meaning that they don't have a vascular bundle, they are just thallus. Then you form vascular bundle or vascular tissue. Then you talk about the seed. That's why we say that these ones are what you call, they have seeds which are naked, naked seeds. Here they have seeds which are enclosed in the fruit. This one don't have seeds, and these ones don't have seeds. They have spores. Yes. Hence, this is seed development, or this is a vascular bundle or vascular tissue. Which of the this group are, are, are dependent on water for fertilization? This one, brophyte. They are primitive. They are still primitive. That's why they are depending on water. They even can't grow in harsh conditions, like a desert, never. You can't find a barophyte in a desert. To do what? There's no water there. Yes. So, basically, that's the answer. Which, yes, we are done with that. Investigation. Investigation was conducted to determine which factor are essential for photosynthesis. Which factor? Meaning that they, they did different factors. They did different factors. Look, here, when they say sodium hydroxide, so the monoxide absorbs carbon dioxide. It means that this experiment must be for carbon dioxide. What about this? They are putting a foil here, meaning that they are trying to block light. So this is for carbon dioxide. This is light, carbon dioxide. Well, this one, they say a variegated leaf. A variegated leaf is a leaf which has different colors. The one green and white could be white and green, or it could be yellow and green. But you know what happens if green color is not there. So it means that this is a factor, chlorophyll. Yeah, they are discussing about chlorophyll. Carbon dioxide is necessary for photosynthesis. Light is necessary for photosynthesis. And then here, chlorophyll is necessary for photosynthesis. Yeah, basically, that's it. If, let's explain. Explain why I placed the part of the plant in a dark before investigation. Basically, we do that so that we can do the comparison. What will happen if we remove the carbon dioxide, uh, we remove the, the, the starch? Basically, it's done for the, doing what you call the distarch. So what will happen is to distarch, to remove the starch. And then it means that whatever is going to happen afterwards is going to be as a result of the photosynthesis, which is happening. Yes not the one which is stored. Provided the aim of the investigation for setup A. Setup A, we say that is for carbon dioxide. To see whether carbon dioxide is, 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 is needed or is necessary 
for photosynthesis. And then when we go to C, we see, to see if we said this is for chlorophyll, to see if chlorophyll is needed for photosynthesis. So it's the same thing. See whether photosynthesis is necessary or needed for photosynthesis. What is the reason for the following steps during starch test? Boiling leaf in water. Why do we boil the leaf in water? Basically, it's to kill the cells. To kill the cells so that they don't respire. Yes. So that we know that whatever comes is... Because if you don't, they will respire and they will use the starch. Yes, you think the starch was not produced, but starch was produced. Boiling the leaf in alcohol. Why do we boil the uh, leaf in alcohol? Is to bring about the decaralization, remove the chlorophyll. Yes. So using water bath when boiling the leaf in alcohol. Why do you use a water bath? Why do you, when you are heating alcohol, you don't heat it directly? No, if this is alcohol, you put if this is water and then you put alcohol here. Why? Because alcohol is fl flammable. Yes, can catch fire if you do it direct. Predict the results of investigation after starch test. After starch test. What happens? Starch test for A, B, C. Okay, here, look. Here there is no carbon dioxide, meaning that the part which is inside, it will remain, uh, it will remain brown or yellow. Yes, depending on the concentration. While this one, which has carbon dioxide from atmosphere, it will be blue black, this part. Then this one, the part which is shaded or with a foil, it will not turn blue black, it will remain yellow. While the part which received light, it will turn blue black. The part which is white here, it will remain brown, while the part which is green, it is still, it will turn blue-black. Basically, that's what they are looking for. So they brought all these three factors in one experiment. Wow. It was a cool experiment. Thank you to the person who said, sorry if you failed it, but promise me, you won't fail it again. Okay, let's go to the next question. Predict. Okay, we are done with that. What do the conclusion from above invest? What do you conclude from the above investigation? Since we see that without carbon dioxide, starch cannot be produced, it means that it is necessary. Without light, starch can't be produced, it means that it's necessary. Without chlorophyll, starch cannot be produced, it means that it's necessary. Therefore, carbon dioxide, light, and chlorophyll are necessary for photosynthesis. So that's the conclusion I can do. Yeah, I think so. That's the conclusion. Yeah. Starch, mm -mm. carbon dioxide, light, chlorophyll, or chlorophyll, carbon dioxide, light. They are necessary for photosynthesis. Mm. Good. And let's go to these animals. Which diagram represents a slow mate and eh? Not a slow mate. Represents a slow mate and look, this is not a combination. If this A was here, it would have been B. But the A is separated from the word. Therefore, it's A. They are saying slow mate. So they're looking for the silhouette. So it is easy. Okay. State two functions of the silhouette. Yeah. Why should it have this cavity, the, the silhouette? Basically, it prevents the organs, the complex organs. It prevents this mixing up. Or it, it allows the complex organs to develop because of the space which is involved in that. Yes. So complex organs can, can develop. And also it separates the different layers, like the ectoderm and the, the endoderm. 
can be separated by the mesoderm. You see? Yes. And be separated. So there are so many advantages. But they just want just one, two, yeah. Then the phylum, then one phylum with the body plan B. B yeah, this one. And we can talk about blood helminthesis. Blooded. Let me write. I know this one, it is blooded uh, like that. Then, hell me. Blooded, hell me. Then, this is the sis. Blooded, hell me. The sis. Blooded, hell me. The sis. The sis. Yeah. Blooded, hell me. The sis. Yeah, these ones are uh, when you talk about blood helminthes. You are talking about the tip ones. Yeah, that's the best example. That long thing when you go to the toilet, most especially those who like to do it in the bush. Yes, in the bush there, you can find a toilet and fish. You get problems with the stomach. What next? You'll see a tapeworm. arm. Please don't do that. Anyway, which what do what are the product of fermentation in above brewing process? You have to read, saying that sugar is left in sugar converted into glucose, and then undergoes fermentation. So these sugars are converted into glucose. And then, after what happens when they are converted into glucose? They will undergo what you call fermentation. Yes. So, what is going to happen here? They are looking for the product. Name the product for fermentation. Basically, if it, it is, it is uh, plants, it's going to be alcohol and uh, carbon dioxide. People who are doing this on board, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that one. Yes. When they are doing it, there, there, there. In Kasi, yes, you'll see that they produce this, uh, uh, what? Alcohol and the carbon dioxide. You see those bubbles rising. Name one way in which the above mentioned process can generate income. How is this one going to generate income? Which process? The fermentation. Is ferment, meaning that what is fermentation used for? Used for beers, wine, cheese, bread, rice, all this can be sold and money. Chelete. Uh -huh. Yeah, machankura, yes, can be obtained from that. This type of Biochemical process can also occur in animals. Yes, meaning that uh, it occurs in, in what's called anaerobic respiration. By referring to this type of respiration, explain why muscles become stiff during extra uh, extreme exercise. Why do you become stiff? Why do you get this fatigue? Why do you get this muscle pulse? Why? Basically, it's because oxygen, there is limited supply of oxygen and then if there is limited supply of oxygen yes what means it means that enough energy cannot be what uh produced so this result in accumulation of lactic lactic acid it's lactic acid which make them to be painful so less oxygen leading to lactic acid accumulation yes so question number Three is saying. So question three is saying that the diagram below uh, diagram of human digestive system, um, set so the diagram of human digestive system, and answer the question that follows. So here you have uh, different questions or different labels. Identify parts labeled B and D. Not 
B to D. Uh -uh. It's B and D. So basically, when you go back to B, it's also for gas. It's also for gas. Also for gas. And then uh, D, this is a large uh, intestine. But what part of the large intestine? It's a colon. And they're saying that uh, give the letters of the parts where bile is stored. It's, 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 it's stored in the bile. So it's, it's, it's bile here. Girl bladder. All right. Stored in the girl bladder. Uh -huh. Then they're saying that food is mixed with the gastric juice and become acidic chain. Whenever I talk about us, we only have acidic medium in stomach. Stomach. So it means that the answer must be for C. Then they are saying that and uh, explain one structure. When you say structure is what you see and the function. Structure, what you see, the not functional adaptation of the virus. When you say adaptation, it means that you talk about the structure and the part, sorry, and, and the function. So it has a lot of, a lot of adaptation, goblet cell, ethereum, uh, with mitochondria, you can talk about richly supplied with the capillaries, you can talk about the lecture duct, uh, absorbing what all those, uh, when you talk about goblet cell, what is it for? When you talk about a microvilli, a microvilli or villi, or further increase in the surface area, or what is it for? Lecture duct is, is what is for transportation of the fats. Yeah. So it has a lot of, um, like five of them. So what will happen if fat E is severely damaged and cannot produce, perform its function? Fat e. So what will happen if, 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 if fat D is damaged? It means that food will not be transported or it will not be absorbed. And among the ones which are not absorbed, we might have what we call essential nutrients. And then this will cause a lot of uh, abnormalities or impairment. So it means that here, absorption of nutrients will not, will not take place or will be impaired or will be limited if it is limited then what happens the, the there will be deficiencies in essential nutrients and then if you don't have enough nutrients then you expect weight loss an investigation was conducted by the scientists to determine the effect of uh, a low gi breakfast and a high gi breakfast on the average blood glucose okay so so i have to read everything there. explain one possible reason why blood sample were taken before you are taken before the breakfast? Why do we? Basically, it's, it's the same question which they asked. Yes, before. So here you are expecting to say that comparison of the results, or you can talk about baseline. You know that is when you don't. What, what is the minimum amount of? Uh, glucose you might have in the blood so uh, before you eat so it's a baseline so that you can subtract and then able to know what happened the changes which happen yeah so so it's basically to compare the these results and they're saying that identify the independent variable mm. independent variable let's go back and see we always get it from the investigation was conducted to, to determine the effect of low GI breakfast and the high GI breakfast. So these are different types of breakfast. Yes, on the average glucose. What will the breakfast do on the blood glucose? So basically, yeah, the independent is the type of breakfast. Type of breakfast. Then, which with reference to uh, give the blood glucose concentration at 25 at 45 uh, 
uh, minutes. Okay, 45, 45, 45 is here. So for what? For what now? The same for high. So high is that. Uh -huh. So you draw a line here. So it's around 8.5, maybe, yeah. Around 8.5 watt. Millimeters are uh, mil. Eh? Moles per liter. Yes. Whatever unit it is. So just put the unit there. So you're saying that? Oh, it's M M O L millimeters of blood per liter. Yes, millimeters of blood. They are saying that we, with the reference to the graph, describe the difference between the effect of eating this compared to the eating of a high on the blood glucose level. So when you eat high, it means that it's gonna it's gonna increase st uh, sharply. There is an, a sharp increase, and then after forty five minutes, then it decreases still sharply. While here is gonna be gradual. There's a gradual increase immediately after the meal, and then a gradual decrease uh, after forty five minutes. Still, yeah. So basically, that is it. Name the hormone that's secreted by the pancreas that will cause the effect of glucose level as seen in the graph from 45 to what causes the glucose to drop? It's basically the hormone called insulin. Yeah, I, I, when I was predicting, yes, I told you they love this question because it is a great way of what? Explain the effect of high GI breakfast on the secretion of the hormone above. How? Yeah, this one will bring the significance. Uh, it will bring the significance release of hormone. So it means that the hormone will be released significantly. Yes. And then this will stimulate the liver to convert the glucose, glucose to uh, glycogen. So, so this one is the negative feedback mechanism, but it is not direct. You're supposed to use, yeah. Supposed to use what? Yeah. Supposed to use a high reasoning so that you are able to get to that point. Yes. And I think that six months later, scientists decided to repeat the investigation for five additional women joined and the, the investigation and were not given the breakfast at all as a control group. So that one reason why scientists decided to repeat the investigation. Why? When, when you repeat the investigation, is basically you are increasing the reliability. And then they're saying that uh, explain the significance of having control group in this investigation. Basically, when you are bringing the, the control group, is comparing the results. Yes, meaning that we'll see when you have breakfast you took breakfast and before and without taking breakfast what is going to happen so it's basically to compare the results the thing that give two ways in which scientists can ensure validity um validity was done to show that these results were valid is because of uh they did measure the, these people's uh blood before the breakfast, eh? for the break, first. And then uh, number two is uh, they did this interval 15 minutes every, 15 minutes for a period of 120 minutes. Every, after 15 minutes, they repeat, they repeat, you see? Yeah, so since they got the same thing, then they are they're able, they have the same interval, basically, the same interval. It's not like 15, 10, 20, uh, same interval. Hence, they are able to get uh, the results correctly. Then, uh, this one is, uh, they are bringing another question concerning about the, uh, they are bringing the same question, but is concerning about the animal classification. I know that this is a problem to many students and some teachers 
when they are teaching this topic, they get some challenges from students saying that they don't understand uh, this topic. But this topic is easy because we have some specific things we are looking for. Yes. Classification, basically, actually, classification is, is, is not easy to people because we use scientific words. Anyway, which group, which firearm is represented in ABC and B? These ones, because they have the exoskeleton, so they're arthropods. Not anthropod, arthropod, arthropoda, so that's the fire. So these ones, uh, they are nidarians. So the phylum becomes phylum nidaria. Yeah, because they, they have these tentacles, yes. And then this one, because they are like sponges, sponges, né? spongy. So they are polyphera, yes. So arthropods, nidaria, and polyphera. Then they are saying that identify the type of symmetry for B. This one, because you can cut it here, this this is the same, the same, the same, the same. So it is a radio symmetry. Then they are saying that give one benefit for the type of symmetry shown above. Yeah, basically it is it brings about efficiency in, 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 in movement. And also it can protect the organisms from predator. And also the organism can get food easily. Why? Because any side, any, any, any side you come from, their hands, né? check. It means that you're able to do that. They're saying that which organ ABC have the following characteristics? Aeroblastic. Aeroblastic, it is B. And then asymmetrical. Asymmetrical, you see? Asymmetrical, it means that they don't have a symmetry, the sponges. If you cut here, this and this is not the same. So it becomes spongy. And then they're saying that uh, silomate. Silomate, then definitely the answer is going to be A, meaning that they are well developed. So if they are well developed, then that is e, the answer. Then they are saying that, um, what are they saying? Define the term cephalization. When we talk about cephalization, basically is the development, development, development of the head. That is what called cephalization. Give one advantage of, and one a disadvantage of exoskeleton to arthropods. Advantage of uh, exoskeleton is uh, basically it shield the animal from the physical harm. Why? Because of the exoskeleton, which is there. And provide the structure support. Facilitate movement. There are a lot of things. Prevents water from being lost. What about disadvantage? It limits flexibility. Also limits growth. It's supposed to mold fast before it changes into a different uh, angle or a different uh, size. Hence, it becomes a challenge to them. Yeah, discuss how the decrease in the B population can affect the sustainability of ecosystem. Don't forget that these bees are very important for uh, pollination. And then now, if the population has decreased, then automatically you're going to have less level of pollination. If the population has decreased for, for the bee, then it means that you're going to have less pollination taking place. And then you're going to have less biodiversity, meaning that less food basically. We will not have enough food because crops will not make food. Yes. Then they're saying that study the diagram representing the stage of cellular respiration. So, study the diagram. Study the diagram representing the stage of cellular respiration in animal cell and answer the question that follows. So, here you have the basically this is which stage one is this? This is the glycolysis. This is growth cycle. This is oxidative phosphorylation. So, you have to know what happens in glycolysis. Remember, you have the six carbon molecule, uh, carbon atom molecule. 
one, two, three, four, five, six, breaks down to form three, three. So the three, they enter the Krebs cycle, and then you form what you call the energy as the hydrogen. You understand? Yes, molecule which is it. NAD. NAD H. Yes, so the NAD H will go in, and then the same story here, you form the NAD H plus FAD. And then this will enter the oxidative phosphorylation. But uh, during this process, what happens? So here, oxygen is being used. You understand? And then once oxygen is used, you produce some bit of ATP. And then this, they will enter. Yes. Once this molecule enters, it undergoes uh, a series of what? Of reaction and then once it undergoes a reaction down you have the energy carrier system that is the the electron transport system yes so energy is being what is being released whenever one molecule goes to another energy is released one motion another energy is released so at the end of the day you will produce uh h2o as a by uh, uh, product H2O, and then you're gonna produce carbon dioxide also as a what? As a byproduct. So at the end of the day, you produce H2O, then you will produce ADP. A I say ADP. Yes, ADP, not produce ADP. ADP will uh, combine with inorganic phosphate to form. ATP. So this is very rich with hydrogen, uh, sorry, with energy. Hence, when they come here, what will happen uh, when compound E is, compound E, if oxygen is not present, compound E is compound E now. They are all compound E. So don't forget that this is the pyruvate or pyruvic acid. So the, if oxygen is not present, it will not enter here. So if it is animal, then, yeah, they said in animal, it will be converted into lactic acid. Yeah, and plus just a little bit of uh, ATP. So it's converted into lactic, lactic acid. Yes, just a bit of what? And then now, what will happen? Uh, so you will produce here lactic acid. And then what will happen to... Stage identify stage one. Stage one, we said that that is glycolysis. Stage two, uh, so uh, when they say that organic molecule A, what is organic molecule A? It is glucose. So the answer is going to be glucose there, glucose, and then energy rich substance C. Uh, we see, we see, oh, what is this C which is being produced? It is ATP, adenosine uh, triphosphate, which is formed here. And then you have gas D, where is gas D? Gas D is going to be carbon dioxide. And then you have byproduct F, with F. What is this byproduct? This is it. H2O, yeah. H2O is needed, but is a byproduct, yes. Then they're saying that draw a diagram of a mitochondrion. Uh, don't forget that a, a, a mitochondrion is a, mitochondrion is an organelle. So, and we say that it's, it's like a social, sausage shape. You put a title or a caption, yes. And then don't forget that the inner layers are infolded. Sorry. The inner layer is infolded. Change is infolded. Yes. Yeah, it has a DNA. It has a DNA. It has uh, some bit of ribosomes. Some bit of ribosome. So you talk about the outer membrane, outer membrane, then talk about the inner 
membrane. Then you talk about ribo, ribo, zone. Then you talk about matrix, matrix. Yes. Uh, then you talk about the crystal, this enfolded part. Three star. Yes. Uh, then you talk about, yeah, if you want to, it, uh, the intermembrane space, the space between the membrane. Intermembrane space. So, yeah, basically the space between the two membranes. That's how you're supposed to draw and then label. So this marks the end of our discussion for this paper. And I think the paper was easy if you had read our distinction material. Thank you very much. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to others our daily new areas. Let me know if you have a, a problem with this subject so that we can sort it out. Stay blessed. MCID as usual. Welcome back to our